I'm going to share with you five features of dreams that hint at the underlying nature of reality. The writers of the Zohar, which is the world's most mysterious, ancient, hidden book, tell us that they attained an upper reality to the one that we're living in. And when they did so, they said that this reality is like being in a dream. And our dreams are like dreams within a dream. And that's why, although the corporeal dreams that we have are just the brain's metabolism of what's been going on in our life, we can nevertheless glean some hints as to the underlying nature of the reality that we're in by looking at dreams. Because according to Kabbalists, our life is really just a vivid dream. One, reality manifesting via stimuli from a hidden world. Dreams are the product of stimuli furnished to us by a hidden world that's hidden to us right now because we're dreaming. The matter of dreams is stimuli from waking life that's just reordered so that our brain can order them in a way that we can digest and process them. What's interesting is how stimuli from our world can just readily be incorporated into our dream. For example, a plane roars overhead and suddenly you dream yourself to be the pilot. Or your alarm goes off and suddenly within the dream there are people fleeing from a fire that you suddenly remember that you actually started by leaving a pot on the stove and the brain fills in the logic to make whatever stimuli is coming to you make sense within the dream. Spiritual parallel. Right now, we're in a spiritual world interacting with objects that are actually spiritual objects, but we're imagining them the way that we can logically imagine them in this imagination, this dream that we're having. And we're having a very wild dream, one in which there's no creator, in which there's no creator of our reality. And seemingly we can do whatever we want as long as we can get away with it. While the truth is, we're actually in a spiritual reality that we can't see until we start behaving according to the laws of that reality. Laws of bestowal. That is, we are calibrated such that we always, either subconsciously or consciously, try to receive all the best, the maximum that we can possibly receive without thinking about why we're receiving it, if perhaps we should receive it in a special way, in a way that bestows back to the one that's giving it to us. And we do this because we don't know that there is a creator from which everything is coming to us. Until we start behaving in this way, in the form of bestowal, with the intention to bestow, we don't reveal him. And we continue to live in this dream in which there's no creator. Two, contact with your true self is unconscious. Ever notice how in dreams you don't really have a body, even if you try to look at your hands, you can't really see them. You're kind of just this ghost that floats from scene to scene. Spiritual parallel. In dreams, it's pretty clear that the body to which stuff in the dream is happening is not really my true body because I can fall into a canyon, drive off a cliff, and in the next moment, I'm living reincarnated as if into a new life and everything's just fine. So I'm not the body to which supposedly some car crash in the dream happened. Rather, I am this desire that's going from one scene to the next. And this is how it really is. This is the truth about our reality, that we're in some kind of movie like The Matrix or Vanilla Sky, where our real self is somewhere else. It's not what we imagine, this biological body. Our real self is the soul, which is eternal, doesn't die. And I go from scene to scene in this movie reel that I'm calling my life until my connection with the soul becomes conscious. Ever have those dreams where you realize that you lack free will? You're not able to stop doing what the dream is compelling you to do. There's some force that compels you to cheat on your wife, drive into a tidal wave or off of a cliff, and you can't stop it. Spiritual parallel. As creepy as it sounds, that's exactly what's being done with us. We're being shifted from scene to scene, only different from dreams. We're not allowed to see how we're controlled. We have the illusion of control, which is a double concealment because not only are we controlled, but we're also utterly convinced that we're controlling our lives. Four, inability to realize that you're dreaming. 
we've all had those moments in dreams where we have this realization that we're dreaming, and then in the next moment, we find that we're unconsciously sailing through different dream scenes unaware. In our lives, it's this way too. But there are moments when we start to feel that maybe there is a reality behind the one in which we exist. We have this brief sensation, but then we get pulled into different desires and we forget all about it. And there really is a way out of this rather unpleasant dream, but we have to seize this moment when we have this awakening. We need a system, some kind of environment into which I can put myself so that I won't forget that I'm dreaming. Five, lucid dreaming can be learned. Participants in a study were administered lights and sounds in specific orders that reminded the person, triggered them during their dream, to remember that they're dreaming and take control of the dream. Spiritual parallel. There are proverbial lights and sounds within this dream reality that we're living that can awaken a person to realize and not lose the sensation that they are dreaming and by following this thread actually awaken from the dream. By intentionally designing around us a special environment that consists of objects, so to speak, that come from the non-dream world, from the true reality, the spiritual reality, we can awaken ourselves in those moments when we would have slid back into unconscious painful development. These are the authentic texts of Kabbalah, which are written about that real world. The way that if you start accidentally in your sleep thinking too much about work, you start awakening, you start remembering that there's an important world in which there are things that need to be done. The books of Kabbalah and other students who are studying these books can be part of our environment which reminds us about the true reality, that reality of bestowal in which the Creator does exist, in which all that we experience comes from this creator and a response from us is expected. So as you're watching this video in this moment, this is that point in the dream where you realize, oh, I'm dreaming. And now is your chance to set up around you in your environment, the alarm clocks that will awaken you to the true spiritual reality. Because in a moment, you'll forget and continue sailing unconsciously. These alarm clocks are the authentic books of Kabbalah and a group that studies these books together.